Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 8. This tutorial we're going to focus on sounds and music so we're going to bring in some background music and we're also going to look at some sound effects for when we press the buttons. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships. You'll get things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, you can see I have this open once again, just three little audio files, and I'm going to select them all and drag and drop them into Unity. I'll leave a link to these audio files in the pinned comment below. So if you're watching this individual tutorial or watching the full series, you'll still find it in that pinned comment. Just download it, bring them into Unity, just like I have. You may need to unzip them first, or you can use your own audio files if you want to. So let's start with the background music. This one right here we can see is clearly quite a lot louder than the correct and incorrect. So these two are sound effects and this is just some background music. So if I put this into Unity, it's going to be very, very, very loud. So we need to manipulate it a little bit. So let's go to Master Control. Let's right click and let's create Empty. And I'm going to have this as just BGM, short for background music. And all I'm going to do is drag and drop that quiz BGM onto that object up here. And you'll see that we have an audio source component. Now I'm not going to go into too much of what all of this is because realistically all we're doing is just having some background music. We don't need to go in depth too much. There are two things we need to make sure we are aware of. Firstly, we need to have Play on Awake ticked, at least just for now, because we may change it later on depending on the sequence of our quiz app. And we also need Loop on. Basically, this just means that it loops constantly. You know, it, there's never a period where it just stops and feels a bit awkward, I guess. Uh, one thing you can play around with is the volume, and I would recommend playing around with the volume quite a lot. I'm actually going to put this down to 0 0.05, because I know that this background music I created is rather loud. So I'm going to press play now and see how this goes. Okay, fair enough. Not quite sure how loud that's going to sound to you guys. It sounds okay to me, but I have found sometimes that it can be a bit crazy. If we move it. You can see just how loud that can get, and that wasn't all the way up to 1. <clears throat> so, I'm going to keep it at 0 0.05, but we can play around with the pitch as well to make it a little different. So if I press play again, and move the pitch around, you can see just how it sounds. That's madness. What a madness. And also all the way down. Yeah, you can see what's going on, can't you? Yeah. I guess it's up to you how you want it to sound. Um, it, again, it's your game, not mine. So I'm going to leave that background music as it is. That's going to start and it's going to loop constantly throughout. Um, I guess it's kind of boring, so <laughs> maybe use your own. Um, if you want to. So let's deal with some of these sound effects. This is where programming and sound mix together to create something kind of cool. So let's add two more game objects to our scene. One's going to be for the correct answer, the other's going to be for the incorrect answer. So on Master Control again, let's right click, create empty, and we'll rename this to correct FX, and let's drag and drop correct onto here. Now, we do need to untick play on awake. The reason being is because we want to be able to control when this um, sound effect plays. We don't want it to play straight away when the scene starts because that would just be a little bit weird. So all we realistically need to have is that unticked. Everything else is probably fine, but you can play around with different settings if you want to. So let's also set it up for the wrong answer, incorrect. So hold control, press D on correct to duplicate it, and let's rename it to wrong effects. And then up here where we've got uh, correct, you can just drag and drop the incorrect audio file and place it there. So we now have the two. We have right and wrong. 
we need to make sure we assign them correctly in the script to be able to play correctly. And I realize I have indeed got them inside the scripts folder. We probably should move them out of there because they're not scripts. So let's right click and create a new folder. Just call it audio. And let's move each of those out of the audio folder, out of the scripts folder into the audio folder. So even if you move them, they will actually move to the correct location. And a good way of defining whether they have moved to the correct location in here is if we click it, you can see it goes to wherever that asset is stored. So it will still work as intended, even if we've moved them from that folder. So let's figure out now how we can get these buttons to play a sound effect if we've chosen the right or wrong answer. Well, let's head into the answer button script. And remember when I said that this script is static in a sense, it'll never really change. It's something that you build upon. So once you've got the basic rundown of how it works, and realistically this is now a sequence, it's never gonna change. So the next set of variables that we're going to add are going to be those two sound effects. And we're going to type public audio source, and let's call it, correct effects and then public audio source wrong effects semicolon now the way this is going to work is we are going to tell the script that the correct effects is this one and the wrong effects is the other one they just need to play them at the correct time so that means that whenever we have green we play the correct effects so underneath there correct effects dot play oh, close bracket semicolon so what that's going to do is once we've set the green background active it will then play that sound effect so that also means that after we've displayed the red one if we've chosen the wrong one we say wrong effects dot play open close bracket semicolon and that is basically just repeated a couple of other times for the other buttons. So you just have to make sure that you do put the correct line of code in the correct place. So B, C, and D, all for the correct sound effect. And if we take the wrong one, place it here, and here, and here. If you end up in a situation where both of the sounds play at exactly the same time, chances are that you've put them in the same place by mistake. So just quickly double check that. So let's save that script and then let's head back into Unity and let it compile. Now remember that script is on the master control object and we just need to set those two objects and we don't need to set the actual audio asset itself we can set the game object that we put that audio asset on so in this case we've got correct effects which would go down here i'm just going to put wrong on there as well now the key to all of this is pressing the button and seeing if it does work so let's press play brilliant and none of the other buttons work I'm really not sure how loud that background music is, so I may put it down even further because I feel like in the edit it's going to be quite loud. And sometimes when you've got audio too loud, the whole thing is just unsalvageable. So I'm going to put it down even further. Hopefully it was okay. Uh, let's press play and check out the wrong, incorrect. So, oh, we got it wrong. Perfect. So let's make sure the other buttons work as intended. That's good. And finally, cool. So sound effects work. And like I say, you can use any sound effect at all. You don't have to use the exact same sound effects that I use, same with the music. But the reality is that's all you need to do. Just a couple of lines of code as long as your audio files are there, all put together you can make anything play at any given time. You could even add a sound effect for when a question appears if you want to. Again, it's, it's entirely up to you. All you would need to do is just put whatever it is, dot play at the correct point in your script. So 
Next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to delve into C Sharp a little bit more and we're going to create the ability to randomly generate questions. But what that does mean is that we're going to have to create a couple of questions. So if you've got questions in mind uh, and answers, write them down uh, before you move on to the next part uh, because that's probably going to come in handy. I'm just going to probably make up a couple of questions on the spot, on the fly, like I usually do. Um, but yeah, next question is all going to be about generating questions and also generating them randomly. So we don't want a sequence of questions. We want one to be generated that's completely different, just completely random. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.